it's zombie apocalypse time where our predators are the zombies and the prey are the humans now in a zombie apocalypse those zombies are going to have an outbreak and grow in numbers um, uh, in inverse proportions to the humans as they eat the humans and turn them into zombies um, the humans would go down the zombies would go up and vice versa so we're going to model this situation so take a minute to pause the video have a read through the question and then I'm going to carry on. And we start off with a sketch of the information that we've got. So we'll do the zombies first. And the information we've got on them actually refers to their peak being um, before the study begins. So when we do our scale, we need to actually go a little bit before the start of our study. So this is time um, since study began. Um, versus our population. I'm going to do the um, zombies in um, a kind of purpley colour. So we've got their peak happens um, pi minus two years before the study. So pi minus two is just a number. 3.14 minus two would be 1.14 and that's before the study began. So this is pi minus two but on the negative side. So negative pi minus two is when we're going to have our big peak up here. And I'm going to determine that the population is in thousands. Um, so that peak happens at 50,000. Um, then we're told that um, the peak uh, happens again six years after this. So in another six years, um, we will have our next peak. So if we add six on to there, it would be around about 4.8. So somewhere around here that'll be our next peak um, and we've got the minimum of a thousand of eight thousand so somewhere down here at, um, probably not quite there so around um, there we've got the eight thousand and that will happen halfway between these two points here this was um, minus pi minus two um, plus six so then halfway between them we'll work that out in a second um, and that's going to be where we hit our minimum and we're just doing a sketch of what that looks like now so something like this all right let's add in our humans so the humans have a peak of 9000 um, and that happens two years after the study began so if we pop that onto our curve we've got a 9000 at around about two years in and then we have um, our minimum of a thousand at six years into the study. So somewhere up here we've got a um, thousand as our minimum for the humans and we'll pop a sketch in for that. There we go. That one felt a little trickier to um, kind of think about where everything was because of the pi involved with that. So let's just go to our numbers working out part now. Um, working out amplitude, frequency, and all of that jibber-jabber, and then we'll plot it onto Desmos to check what we're doing. So starting with the zombies, our amplitude is 50,000 uh, minus 8,000 over 2, um, which comes to 21,000. Um, then our frequency, that's 2 pi divided by the period. Well, our period was um, 6 years. I'm going to do the vertical shift next. On previous videos, I've done the horizontal first, but that is usually the one that takes a little more thinking about. So I'm going to do vertical first. So that's 50,000 plus 8,000 over 2. So 29,000. Okay, horizontal shift now. And we need to think about this for both sine and cos. All right, so just taking a little look at um, our peaks there. So we've got a the top of the um, curve there happening at pi by two, uh, pi minus two to the left. So on our cos curve, this will give us a uh, shift of plus pi minus two, so that we get that shift to the left. Then we've got to think what happens for the equivalent sine curve. So our shift on the sine curve, we're looking for where this point um, would be. So if we think about um, this 
distance here, that was um, 6, so halfway would be 3, and then halfway between that um, would get us where this point is. So it would be 1.5 on from this where this peak was. So that means we're talking about minus pi minus 2 plus 1.5, which simplifies to 3.5 minus pi. So this point on the curve here would be 3.5 minus pi, so therefore our sine curve will have a right shift of 3.5 minus pi. But actually what I've just realized, that takes me to the point on the curve where we're starting on the down, but sine actually starts on an up like this. So we can still use that, but it means that we're going to need to do it on the negative sine curve so that it flips it to um, be that reflection of what the sine curve is. And this is what that graph looks like. So we've got the cos1 at the top here and the sine1 here. Um, just to show you, if I hadn't done that negative, it would have uh, done it the other way around. So when you put that into Desmos, you can quickly see you've, you've got it backwards and then just fix things up and make that the negative. Um, we could have done it by adjusting this shift Again, but just um, looking at where the where this curve starts on the up and then fix that. But I just fixed it by making a negative negative instead. All right, let's take a look at the humans graph. So we've got our amplitude of 4000. Um, the frequency is 2 pi divided by 8 because we were told that the distance between the minimum and the maximum was 4 years. So our full period would be 8 years. Um, vertical shift 5000. Horizontal shift. Now, taking a look at the cos curve, our maximum started um, two years after the study began. So our cos curve would start at that uh, peak up here, which would give us a minus two shift. Now, um, since the it's four years from the, the maximum down to the minimum, so it would be two years halfway of that to get this bit here of um, where the sine curve would start from. So that's the exact two years difference between where the cos curve starts from, so therefore the sine curve doesn't require a shift, it would just be a zero there. So we end up with this one here, uh, this one for the cos one and this one for the sine one. Um, and you've got all of your formulae in there that I'll just go and write into the work solutions now. So now we look at what we need to do next. Um, so calculate how long it will take the zombie population to first reach 10,000 after the start of the study. So we're looking for when the zombies um, reach 10,000, and that happens when this equation um, equals 10,000. We just need to pick one of the two equations for the zombies and set it equal to 10,000. Do make sure that you write down this equation here before you hop over to Desmos and start solving it. So now we can go over to Desmos. I've put in y equals 10,000 as a line on my graph. The first time into the study um, where that line hits the zombie line is here at 1.438 uh, years. OK, the next thing is that if this model applies over an extended period, find the times when the number of human survivors in this environment is at serious risk. So serious risk was up here. If the zombie population is greater than 30,000 and the su human survivors are lower than 5,000. So let's write down the um, equivalent equations to think about that. So zombie um, 21,000, etc., etc., has got to be greater than 30,000. And the um, human um, equation is less than 5,000. And now we'll hop over to Desmos and see when that happens. So we'll just read along our graph, um, finding the points where those things are satisfied. So the first thing we can see, our, our human population starts at 5,000 and is going up. So the first time they're at risk would be when they go below 5,000 and the zombies are above 30,000. So this first time at four years, the zombies are above 30,000. So they will remain in that 
danger zone until the zombies come below 30,000 or they get up to 5,000, whichever comes first. So the first one is that the zombies go below 30,000. So we've got this portion between four years and 6.313 where they are at risk. So that happens between four and 6.313 years. Now I've deliberately left a gap so we can put the general solution in there for how frequently this repeats over an extended period of time. So looking at the period of the cycle for the zombies and the humans, the zombies repeat their pattern every six years and the humans repeat their pattern every eight years. Now the lowest common multiple of six and eight is 24, so their combined pattern will repeat every 24 years, which means that it will happen um, at four years plus 24 years afterwards and at 6.313 plus 24 years afterwards again and 24 years after that and 24 years after that and so on and so on. So um, we use 24n as that counter. So n is the counter of like how many repeats of this pattern that we do knowing that we can start at four and then see a repeat of that every 24 after that. So now let's go back to our graph and see how many times that happens within 24 years. So we had the oops, those first two times that it happened we already saw. Um, then we're going to check for, okay, the next time the zombies come back up over 30,000, the humans are safe because they're over 5,000. So let's look at when they drop below 5,000 again. We've got this point here at 12 years, and the zombies are still above that 30,000 mark, so then the humans will be at risk. The zombies drop down to 30,000 at 12.313. So let's put that one like so. All right, next we have the zombies come back up to 30,000 here. And the humans are still below their 5,000, so that'll be a problem. They come back up to 5,000 just here. So we've got between 15.404 and 16. And I think we've got one more. Um, so the humans drop down below 5,000 here at 20 years, but the zombies are below 30, so they're safe. Um, let's just look a little further on. So we have, oh, we'll finish at 24 years there. Um, we've got this period here. The zombies go above 30,000, uh, so that, and the humans are below 5,000 then. The humans come back up to 5,000 just here at 24 years. So that's our final little bit to add. And just do a quick little check that that does actually start repeating again after the 24 years. So you can see uh, the picture of what's happening at 24 years here is the same picture as what was happening here at the beginning for zero. So yes, it is starting to repeat that exact same pattern again every 24 years. So then the final thing to put into our puzzle is to talk about um, assumptions or limitations on um, this, this thing that we just stated up here. And actually, before I carry on with the assumptions and limitations, I forgot a bit in here of actually defining what n is. So n is a positive um, integer. So n can be greater than or equal to zero, where n belongs to the set of integers. That's the best way to write that down most succinctly. OK, now assumptions and limitations. We're assuming that um, this pattern continues um, in the same way indefinitely, which is probably not realistic. Hopefully you'd think that humans in this situation would come up with some better ways to deal with the zombies rather than just following these natural cycles and just letting them come and take over. Um, we're also assuming that the pattern over the 24 years to begin with was correct, but we've only done a study up to eight years. So we are extrapolating on that original study because going to a full 24 year study would be um, pretty unrealistic. And by the time you finished, it would not be all that useful. You might be dead from a zombie attack by then. All right, so that was a fairly lengthy video, just making sure that we've got everything covered and explained all the way through to what you need for excellence, which is this last bit here. So in terms of how this would be marked, um, going through, getting the equations for them um, and doing a simple 
um, answer on that. So this this first one that we saw of um, when the zombies got to 10,000, that, that gets you to your achieved mark. Figuring out the first instances of um, when the humans are at risk and finding those intervals without the 24N, that would get you merit. Introducing that general idea of the 24N um, and discussing assumptions and limitations would get you the excellence. 